Hello and thanks for coming to check this out. Hey, it's been a long time since I put up anything new, so sorry about that. I've just been super, super busy with work. Okay, so here on the left we have this After Effects social media template. It's a free template uh, and you can get it for After Effects from uh, Monkey Motion channel on YouTube. There's a link in the description. And on the right here is a very quick reproduction that I've done in Motion. So today at one of the Facebook user groups, someone asked about how to get started to do something like this in Motion. And so I've done this to follow up on that. And the project file is there for you to download in the description. So let's go through it and have a look at how it was done. And I'm going to pay attention to uh, using the number generators in motion and how to avoid the crash that a lot of users are getting. Uh, and also how I did the, this effect here around the border of the drop zone. Okay, so let's head over to motion and take a look. Okay, here we are in the project file, and when you open the project file, you're going to see uh, these two groups. This is just a uh, color solid for a background, but in the if you were to do this as a project for uh, to go through the Final Cut as a titles template, you'd probably want this background to be a drop zone, so that you can have any. Uh, add your own image to be the backdrop for it. I've just got a color solid in there for now. So in all the main elements are here in this group here graphic and you'll see logo and title in drop zone brand stat. So that's pretty much in order of appearance. So let's have a look at the first elements that come in. Um, so I've got uh, logo and title here. So if we open up, have a look at the logo, then you'll see I have this base shape, outer shape. Uh, so one, two, three, these guys are the camera and this base shape here. If I go to show full view area and pull it back, you'll see it's just waiting there to come in uh, with the drop zone to come later. Okay, so this is the body of the camera, and I have just used uh, keyframes on the first point, last point offset to draw that in. You could use the right on behavior as well. And the same for the lens, it's just a circle drawing in with the offsets keyframe, and this little flash circle is popping in with the overshoot. Okay, so we're dialed back here. You can see that this shape here. All right, let's have a look at the base. So it's 400 by 400. And I think the this shape here, again, is 400 by 400 pretty much. So what's happening here is if we go to properties, I've just set, we come here, I've got this base shape 15% larger than the outer shape. And it's starting at 505% um, to get it, clear it off the canvas. So it acts as a background in the beginning. And then what's happening is it's just scaling back down to be 15% larger than the camera. And right about, oh, okay, so that's the camera. And then we want to look at, if I close this up, we want to look at this group, this group here is one composition and you'll see something's happening here as well. So what's happening here first of all is as this background base shape dials back down on the scale to fit around the border 
the composition itself, the entire group, is retracting. Here is scaling down to shrink down. And these keyframes here are on the X. Remember, if you're using motion, you don't have to keyframe. You can use um, behaviors instead to move everything around. So it pulls back to sit around the outlines of the camera. And then it's going to the entire composition here is scaling down from here to here to drop the size and then from here to here shifting over on the X axis and that's going to usher in the title. So we'll have a look at the title now. Okay so the next element to come in is the Instagram or the titles. So it's here in this group, and these are all things that we've covered before in titles, guides, so I won't go into too much detail here. I'll just point out that the mask source for the image mask is aligned to the line, and that is what's revealing in the text, and I'll remind you that if you want to animate your text in a template that you want other people to use, then always do it through sequence text. And the reason for that is that, uh, well, you don't have to use the presets. You can set the speed curve by using custom, like I've done here. There's the speed curve. So through a sequence text, you can just keyframe the text like you would uh, keyframing directly. But the benefit to you is that then these parameters are publishable. So if you keyframe directly, you can't publish the start point the origin point. Uh, it just won't be recognized in the final cut. But if you use sequence text, then you can. So what I've done here, I've just set it, um, you can see that when the text starts that it's poking out through the mask already. So if you publish, if you run it through sequence text and publish these parameters for the user, then they can dial back and dial forward the origin to suit what they need to do, which is great for the user of your template. So remember that, always do your text animations through sequence text. So the text is coming in, and then I think the next event is that, okay, so we've got the logo coming in, and the title's coming in, and both of these groups are sitting in this logo and title in group. So the next event is that this entire group here is going to shift up on the Y and back on the Z. That's the way that I went about this event here. So then the next thing to come in will be this drop zone. Okay, so we'll have a look at that now. Okay, so the drop zone, uh, first of all, all the drop zone elements are in here, and the drop zone that we saw before is just waiting underneath to animate up on the y-axis right after this event finishes. So in here we've got... Um, all right, so I've got the drop zone in this group. The image mask source is this element here. And you see sitting under the drop zone are these two guys here, border. So border is the same size as the mask source, but you'll see that this one has an outline and the mask source is just a fill, so the outline is going to show up around the mask. So pretty much just like this. So for the border, we've got the colors of it set. Um, well, it's set to airbrush, and we're using color over stroke. Uh, make sure that the 
color here and the color here are the same because if we try to do that you get this hard blend here which isn't cool and to get this shine well this effect here with the colors uh, running around to get something similar to what's happening in the After Effects template there I have duplicated this border shape just called it border runner I've set the blend mode to overlay and I put a rate behavior on the Z rotation there so that it runs around over the top and we get that kind of sheen shine effect which I think is similar to what's happening in the After Effects uh, example that we're reproducing here okay so that is the drop zone and then after that we have brand coming in so if we open up this group you'll see uh, first of all brand name sitting here sitting in here it's just this text element here it's animating on the sequence text so that uh, flies up then we've got this follow group and uh, the dots are just these dots that scale in, those are a sequence uh, replicator. Replicator with a sequence replicator applied. And then we've got the follow group here, text, and the base for the text. So just roughly done. Anchor point to the left, scaling them in to pretty much match what's happening in the After Effects visually to match what's happening in the After Effects project there just scaling in on the x-axis and the text is coming in slightly behind the rectangle um, so if you followed along with any of the titles reproductions we've done in automated titles guides I think you'll know this isn't the best way to do it if you want your template to be adaptable and usable in Final Cut I'm just taking the quit option here to get something that's visually the same so if you want to check out the automated titles guides that we've done you'll know uh, how to automate the area of the box to always match whatever the font string sizes and whatever this uh, height width etc etc but visually I think it's pretty close to what was done with the After Effects project there okay so then we've just got this uh, explainer text coming in on the type on put it in here in details it's just using the type on behavior with the fade setting fade in setting on and we're almost done so the last thing we've got are these number generators so we'll have a look at those So then these elements here are all up here in the stats group. So we've got just uh, one image mask source that's applied to the text group. So all of these text elements are just rising up through the mask on sequence text, revealing in like that, one, two, three. And that's all simple stuff to do. But what we want to look at now are these number generators so lots of people have been reporting that numbers generators just crash when you use them the way that you know the user guide says to use them so the way that i have to get around it is that you want to turn off animate so that you lose the start and end inputs but instead you're going to add the ramp behavior to value instead and you're going to set the start and end values through the ramp behavior and make sure your ramp behavior goes the full length of the project and then use the offset here to dial back where you want it to stop otherwise if you just trim it out it's going to reach the value and drop back to zero and so yeah if you're getting the bug using numbers generators that's the way to get around it all right that's that's that 
it's really rough, not much of a reproduction, but I hope that there is something in here that is useful for you. Thanks for checking it out. Thanks for watching.